to have our daddy. Wow. Sometimes when you have daddies like that, you, know, you don't have to talk too much, amen. Oh. Otherwise, you go into an error, <laughs> amen. You pick me up when I was, couldn't find my way in life. Nobody. Amen. amen. Couldn't find my way in life after school and, you know, pick me up. Took me through the word, converted me, took me through the word, cleaned, cleaned me, wow. gave me a job as CEM, wow. not just an ordinary job, as an assistant administrator, wow. fully furnished office, a house. Wow. Amen. Yeah. That is how much this man can take people and change their lives. Wow. Amen. Very humble daddy. Mm. And uh, I thank God I'm connected to Amen. him. Amen. It's a blessing. To me, it's a blessing. Amen. And we feel favored to have him in our midst. And with a big clap offering and a bigger shout, your offering is not good enough. A louder one, amen. To our daddy, Reverend Steve Benson. of the anointing. The seven workings of the anointing. Now before I talk about the workings of the anointing, I want to try to define what the anointing is. The anointing is the supernatural power. And this supernatural power comes from God and it enables you to do things you couldn't do before. I see you doing things you couldn't do before. Amen. Say amen. 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 There are things you admire in the ministry that you want to do, but you can't, sometimes you can only admire it, but you lack the will and the zeal and the capabilities of doing it. Amen. That the anointing will qualify you to do it. Amen. Say amen. amen. I see you receiving an anointing this time. Amen. The anointing also, the anointing also is the overflow of the grace of God. When there is an overflow of God's grace in your life, it is an indication that you are anointed. I see you having an overflow Amen. of God's grace. Amen. Look, any, any time you are doing something in the house of God, and you are not anointed for it, you become boring. You become boring. And personally, I, I, I don't like to hear boring people. Because our time is not enough. Then we are going to sit down to listen to somebody who is not anointed. Please be anointed. If you don't have
about the oil. Sit down. And let people who are carrying oil minister. It is better for us to hear a frog sing than to listen to unanointed singer. So please get the get the oil, get the oil, get the oil, get the oil. Get the oil. Even as an usher, as a technician, as a drama, everybody, every department in the house of God must carry oil. Amen. 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 The anointing also is like a spiritual catalyst. That catalyst will hasten every spiritual process in your life. It means that some people are naturally very slow. Tall and slow. So when you are anointed, the oil acts like a catalyst. It quickens and mobilizes you to do things faster and quicker and more. Say amen. amen. The anointing also is God at work in mortal man. Wow. Hallelujah. Is God at work in mortal man. You are mortal, you are earth and dust. But when you are anointed, you see that whatever you are doing, it is God at work. I see God at work in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When the sick was healed, uh, in Lystra, and the impotent man was healed. The people came and wanted to sacrifice because they felt that the gods have descended from the mountains. But it was God at work. Amen. I see God at work in you. Amen. The anointing also is the Spirit of God taking control of a yielded vessel. The anointing is the Spirit of God. And it can only take control of a vessel that is yielded to him. It means that if you don't yield your vessel to him, he doesn't anoint you. Look, God doesn't anoint people who are laid back. God, listen to me, the oil, you see, you can have, you can have the oil but mine was a spirit. Say amen. amen. There's a big difference between oil and the spirit. No, where do we buy the anointing oil from? From Sainsbury's, Tesco, whatever, whatever. Now, if the power was in the oil, then they should have enough power in Sainsbury to raise the dead. But they have the oil, but mine was the spirit. Amen. That was the spirit. It's not it's ordinary oil there. Now, when it comes into the house of God and we lift it up, then the Spirit of the Lord comes upon it. And when hands are laid on you with oil, it, it now takes over a yielded vessel. A yielded vessel. That means that if your vessel is not yielded, it doesn't take control over your life. That is why people receive oil upon their head, but they are not anointed. It is oil on your head, but it's not anointed. Say amen. amen. Your son can put oil on the uh, 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 anointing oil upon it. Everyone is anointed because it's not, it's not Say amen. amen. You know, some people come to anointing and then they come around and I'm like, oh, this falling, falling, falling. I'm not going to fall. Please, please, please. Some people take pride. I have never fallen before. Then I will never fall. So when they are coming for anointing, they are quitting. Who wants who, who to fall here? Who wants who to fall? The falling comes as a result of the quantum of power coming from above. And your body is too small to contain that power. That is how can you fall. It is the force from heaven. It, your body is too fragile to contain that power. That's how can you fall? Nobody wants anybody to fall here. Yeah. <laughs> so don't come with that mentality. I don't want to fall. No. Nobody is. You know how many times I have fallen? Do you know how many times I have fallen? 
Maybe you haven't fallen enough. That's why you are not anointed. Yeah. Nobody wants anybody to fall. If it, if I have to fall or roll or scream or cry to be anointed, I am ready for it. I am ready for it because I need the oil. I need the anointing because without the oil, your ministry cannot go very far. Am I in church or going somewhere? So when I see people, some people, that is why I don't like uh, sleepy children being woke up to come for the anointing. Mm. I don't know what you are, are doing. A sleepy child, all of you, go for the oil. Oh, please. That is why I don't like anointing when they do row by row. Row by row, it means that whether you like it or not, come for their oil. No. You must come willingly. You must understand what you are coming to receive. You must come with expectation. You must come with a yielded vessel ready to receive the oil. If you sit and your mind is wandering, I'm not making notes, I'm not responding, and everything is time for the anointing, you come and stand. <laughs> Even me, if it was I was I doing mean, that, that would be pass you by. But because I have to perform my duty, that's why I have to put the oil on you. But as to whether the Spirit of God will come upon you, the Bible said, and when David was anointed, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. It means I will do the anointing of the oil, but the Spirit comes from above. The Spirit comes from above. The Spirit comes from above. He will decide who must be anointed. And he will anoint people whose vessels are hungry, empty, desirous, looking, fine for the oil. I see you anointed this morning. So I receive it three times. I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. The anointing also, the anointing also is that which distinguishes you from your fellows. The anointing will make you stand out. In, in Latin, it's sometimes called primus inter pares, which means first among your equals. It means among your equals, the anointing stands you out and separates you. Say amen. amen. When you are anointed, you stand out. Because the anointing separates you, it, it distinguishes you from your family. Wow. If you are seven sisters in the family and you are the one who is anointed, it will be very clear that you are anointed. Amen. It, will be, it will show. When you gather to talk, have discussions, or a meal, whatever, you can see that your life is different. You, are, you, you, you see, you don't do it deliberately. The anointing itself separates you from your sisters. Wow. And your brothers. I see you being separated. Amen. David had seven brothers. He was the youngest. When uh, the prophet Samuel came to the house and uh, wanted to anoint one of the sons as king, you know, according to the Jewish tradition, the firstborn is the birthright of his father. He's the king, the prophet, and the priest. So any good thing coming to a house goes to the firstborn. So when the prophet came, automatically Elijah, who was the firstborn, should be should be anointed as king. But when, but when the prophet wanted to anoint Elijah the firstborn, as he was about to tilt the oil, the Lord spoke from heaven, "Hold it, for I do not see as man see it." Man look it on the outward appearance, but I, the Lord, I look on the heart. I've seen the heart of this man. I've disqualified him from the oil. Amen. Say amen. amen. If the anointing doesn't go to the firstborn, it must go to the second one. I've that he came and he was also. Actually, the Lord said, tell that thing then to go and find a chair and sit down. Wow. The third was also with the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, all the seven sons were in the house, qualified for the, for the oil, but disqualified spiritually. The anointing is the state of your heart. Amen. Say amen. amen. The anointing is the state of your heart. It 
means the heart with which you want to receive the oil is very important. So you have very bad motives to receive the oil. To prove, to prove something. I want to, I want to be another to show them something. What do you want to show to anybody? <laughs> Your motives are wrong. Wrong motives. God doesn't anoint people with wrong motives. I want to be anointed because I want to do the work of God. And the prophet, the prophet Samuel asked Jesse, are these all your sons? He said, if you are looking for sons, men, eh, these are my men. Because the last one is not a son, he's a boy, be somewhere. He's not really a son. It's a boy. It's a boy of God. <laughs> <laughs> He said, bring that boy here. As soon as he stepped in the house, the Lord spoke to the prophet. This is he whom I've chosen, anointing as king over Israel. It means that if you have a good heart, it doesn't matter where you sit in church, the oil will locate you. The oil itself will locate you even at the backside of the desert. Hmm. 